Lee Frost is with us every single year. For the last 10 years, it's been an average of 5% yield loss every single year. But it generally doesn't kill the entire crop. And so it's something that's very important to producers to, to grow resistant varieties, but yet we don't lose our entire crop to it. Stripe rust, disease we didn't even have until 2001. We started seeing it in 2003, was a bad year. In 2005, Texas producers lost almost 15% of their wheat due to that one disease of, uh, of, of stripe rust. Stem rust could be even more devastating. It's one that doesn't just cause yield reduction, but it can t kill the entire crop. This nursery is grown for to identify things with a nice clean leaf like that. Wheat varieties that we grow in the high plains, an example is TAM 112. It's a great variety in the high plains of Texas, but it doesn't do well down here because of the susceptibility to, to leaf rust. We don't get leaf rust all the time in the, in the high plains, and that's why we have to come to nurseries like this in South Texas where every single year the leaf rust is severe. New variety here is TAM 203. Has a very good resistance to leaf rust, very good yield record in this, this area. And this nursery is how we were able to identify things like that. The significant thing about South Texas is that oftentimes rust that begins here will move up with the winds and maturity of the crop and moves up to northern Texas and then to Oklahoma, then all the way to Manitoba within a, a single season of time. It just kind of blows up with the maturity of the crop. And so Texas oftentimes gets blamed for causing epidemics throughout the Great Plains. So we have to really work hard to keep a high level of resistance to Texas, not only to protect the, the Texas producers, but in the entire Great Plains. The nursery here started off at one and a half acres, is now over 20 acres of yield trials and single rows, including participation from wheat breeders throughout the, the Great Plains. Probably 10 different universities are involved with this program right now, and there's over 10,000 different genetic rows of, of wheat that we evaluate every year here. And when I started in 2002, Texas A&M varieties were 20% resistant to leaf rust. And right now, 80% of our material is resistant to leaf rust. So we made a lot of gains through nurseries like this. The stripe rust, we've gained a lot of ground in the last few years as far as breeding for resistance, and most of our varieties are resistant to stripe rust also. Stem rust, as you know, we have, in the last 50 years, we've had total resistance. That's all changed now with UG99. We have to change our focus and include stem rust resistance in that now. Since we don't have UG99 race here, we don't have stem rust, and so we can't use a nursery like this. I, I hope that we never can. That means that I hope that we never do get this disease here in Texas. So we use the molecular markers. We use we send our material over to Kenya, uh, to Africa to screen there for resistance, rather than to bring the disease here. We don't have the disease here. We don't want it.